The Retro Squad at Alton Towers are here to stay for the foreseeable future, and here's why. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm gonna get copyrighted. Before we get started, I wanna show you this photo of how the door for the op box of Spin Jam was being held open. What the hell? Yeah, we'll leave that one there. But yes, unfortunately, I believe that the Retro Squad next season will not be doing this. Yes, that's right, I hear your gasps. I believe that the Retro Squad, rather than being packed away, will be unpacked, ready for their fourth season at Alton Towers. And here's why. Okay, then the Retro Squad rides were a set of funfair rides that were installed at Alton Towers in order to increase capacity. Well, that was the reason they were installed back in 2021. But we're here in 2023, and we've still got three funfair rides. And to be fair, this year they're a little bit different. We've got the addition of Twistertron over in X Sector, which from the reviews that I've seen is nothing really to rave about. I haven't actually been on it myself because the queue time is always so long for it. Imagine queuing 30 to 40 minutes for it. And talking of the queue times for the Retro Squad, here's one of the reasons why I believe the Retro Squad will be staying right through 2024. Okay, while the Retro Squad rides are a complete eyesore to areas, I'm looking at UX Sector, they're pretty popular among guests. Okay, so you heard me mention queue times. Now, the queue times for especially Spin Jam and Twistertron have recently been actually very long. I've seen the queue times top over an hour for some of these, even 40 minutes on the days that I've been, and it shows that the guests at visiting Alton Towers actually do want to go on these rides. So if guests, the general public, are wanting to go on these rides, why would Orton Towers remove these? This excludes Funk and Fly because literally I'm on the Orton Towers app right now and it's closed. As it always is. But yeah, as I was saying, if these visitors, if people are wanting to go on these rides, why would Orton Towers remove them? On busy days, as I said, they can really build up quite a queue. 40 minutes, I've seen them an hour before. And yeah, it can really build up. And what's great about that is that it's taken visitors out of the major coaster queue lines and putting them into these filler attractions. And that's what flat rides do. For example, over at Thorpe Park, they've got such a wide selection of flat rides. Rush, Samurai, that loads of visitors go on. They've got big queues. And that's what Orton Towers needed. So they put these flat rides in and this season I think more than ever we've seen the queue times for these attractions really build up and I think one of the most popular retro squad rides is Spin Jam over in X Sector because it is visually stunning it looks great with the lighting packages and all four arms of this Tivoli Extreme ride going up and spinning round it does look good and it you know it makes people want to go on these which is great but another point is that the new managing director of Orson Towers during a recent interview was questioned about the future of the rides at the resort and she's stated, and I quote, conversations are active. However, she also stated that it was interesting to see the reviews for them from the first time visitors of the park who rode some of the funfair rides and enjoyed them, in particular the guests who maybe don't want to go on the big scale roller coasters that they have. And I get what she's saying here because Funk and Fly over in Forbidden Valley, I think that's a 1.2 meter height restriction. The other two are 1.4, but it's a nice attraction for those who can't get on the big roller coasters because Alton Towers, let's not be wrong, it's a thrill park. It doesn't have a lot of family attractions. It caters to those younger at Sea Bibby's Land, but those from the age where they're sort of too big for Sea Bibby's Land, however, can't get on the major coasters. There's not a lot for them, really. So by having these attractions, it gives them another ride to go on. And another point to make is the people who go to Watson Towers only once a year, which is the majority of visitors at the park, do they really care about the area and the theming? I don't know, I sometimes question that. Do they really care if a ride's good? A ride's good in their view. Having the funfair rides in the areas, for example, X Sector, where there's music blasting out everywhere, it doesn't look quite right in the area. If it's a good ride, does it really matter? Do they really care that it doesn't go with a Smiler theme or an Oblivion theme? I would question that. Do they really go into the area like us enthusiasts and go, tear it down, it ruins the area completely? I would question that really because if they're good rides they're gonna go on them and that's what Orton Towers needs at the end of the day they're filler attractions and that's what they do they do their jobs pretty well and the conversations that the managing director referred to when in this interview I think they're gonna be quite a tough conversation to have because there are a lot of good reasons to keep these rides however there's also a lot of bad reasons and why they should go which I'm actually gonna talk about next it's an eyesore. That's why they should go. You walk in X Sector, you look to the right, you see the Smiler. It's a great coaster. It holds a record worldwide for the most amount of inversions on a roller coaster. You look to your left, you've got Oblivion towering over the trees. The world's first vertical drop roller coaster, as Autumn Towers branded it. And then you look directly down and you've got a set 
of funfair rides. It just really didn't go with the theme of the two coasters in this area, not that there's much theming of it anyway. 9G means that a pilot is undergoing a force nine times that of Earth. Sorry, Lord of Darkness, I'll take that back. But it really doesn't make sense, okay? Maybe you could link Spin Jam to the Marmalizer of the Smiler, okay, okay. But apart from that, there's really, they don't make sense. They're in their own sort of, their own sort of planet because this is planet Spin Jam and Twistertron. It doesn't make sense. And what makes it even worse is that they play their own music. So it's like Battle of the Bands. You've got Smiler going on, you've got Oblivion, and you've got the two Retro Squad music playing the same music, to be fair. But it's like, who's going to win? And usually the Smiler wins because that music is really loud. They've like cranked up all the speakers. <laughs> But yeah, the Retro Squad Rise, they're also blasting their 80s music. They've got the, uh, what do you call it, the Funfair jingles on there as well, going, do you want to go faster? Stuff like that. It, it just doesn't make sense. In my opinion, what would make this better is that they just cut the music off for the two Retro Squad Rides. It wouldn't be as bad then, because right now, X Exit is so hell overwhelming at Orton Towers. It's so many sounds, uh, so much music, and it, it's really just a crazy area. And also the lighting on these rides as well. While it does look nice at dark, in the daytime, it doesn't really do much for me. I think Spin Jam could definitely work in X Sector. If they themed it in, if they got a permanent Tivoli Extreme ride, themed it to the Smarmalizer, Marmal something like that, it could actually work in Autumn Towers. Twistertron, it doesn't look great, I can't lie. And then over in Forbidden Valley, you've got Funk and Fly, which I actually haven't mentioned that much in this video. And that's because you're never open, are you? But yeah, this is probably the one Retro Squad ride that actually fits in pretty well with the area. But this needs to be gone next year when Forbidden Valley opens back up with Nemesis. If I see a Funfair ride when they've got the brand new Nemesis with its new track, its new theme, Galactica, potentially refurbished. We'll talk about that in the next video. But yeah, and then you've got a Funfair ride. That definitely needs to go. If the Retro Squad is staying, please, please do yourself a favour. Move Move that to Dark Forest. Not that Dark Forest has much of a theme anyway. Move it there. Keep Forbidden Valley nice. I don't know. Put anything there. Bring back Ripsaw. Can you pass it? In one of the 80s adverts for Orton Towers, they once said that Orton Towers was a lot nearer than Disneyland. But to be fair, last time I checked, Disneyland didn't have funfair rides. I think what I'm trying to say with the Retro Squad is that their expiry date is long overdue. We've had them for three years. Yeah. The first year it was fine, second year, okay, well, you know, this is its last year, and now we're in the third year, it's getting tiring, and potentially next year will be its fourth year, could it be its fifth year, half a decade of the Retro Squad, you never know, but it's its third year, I think it's time that Alton Towers let go. I think the thing that's stopping them from letting go is the fact that they're actually going to have to buy and invest in some flat rides. And Autumn Towers have spent a lot of money recently. We've had Curse of the Autumn Manor, Nemesis Subterra. Not that there was actually much money spent on Subterra, but still. We've had Nemesis Retrack as well, or having Nemesis Retrack. I believe there's going to be a lot of work in Forbidden Valley. And also, Project Horizon is literally on the horizon. So yeah, I think that's another reason why they're not letting go of the Retro Squad. is because it's just going to cost them so much. And they've spent a lot of money recently on bigger things, Nemesis and stuff like that. However, in my opinion, I'd delay Project Horizon and get some permanent flat rides in. It's so important. Fort Park is a great example of how flat rides can really benefit a theme park. And I really hope that Alton Towers take a page out of Thought Park's book because they do it very, very well. We've got Detonator, Rash Samurai, so many flat rides. Vortex, so many flat rides at Thought Park. It's great to see. But with that said, the Retro Squad at Alton Towers, I believe, is here to stay in the foreseeable future. Me personally, this is exactly what I'd like to see happen to the Retro Squad. Well, if you're still here, thank you so much for getting this far in the video. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers. If we can get to that number by the end of August, I'll do something amazing, spectacular and fantastical. I don't know what I'm going to do, but please get us there.